Hello readers, something new and different for you today. A book with no words. A book that tells a story entirely through the pictures with no text at all, apart from the title, which is Belonging by Jeannie Baker, one of my favourite Australian authors and illustrators. Now, hmm, it's interesting that Jeannie Baker is still being referred to as the author even though there's no words in the book at all. That's amazing, isn't it? The pictures tell us such a strong story. Our main character, well, we only know her name because something is written in one of the pictures that tell us her name is Tracy. And we see her growing up and we only know that she's growing up through different items and different clues we're given in the pictures. So I want you to really look at the pictures as we're going through and listen to what I'm saying as well. But a lot of the information is going to be in the pictures. And there's some themes in this book. One of them is about re-greening. That's a funny word, isn't it? It's like when you have a place that's become so overwhelmed by humans and concrete and bricks and wood that there's hardly any plants left at all. And we're going to make that place green again. We're going to re-green it. And it is set in a city, in an urban environment, but it, it is an Australian author, but I think this story could be appreciated by cities everywhere because it's a really common theme. The importance of family, community, and our environment. I hope you love this book because you know I love bringing them to you. I'll see you on the other side of the story. This is the cover of the book, Belonging by Jeannie Baker. And we're going to have a close look around at the cover. And you can see there's a lot of houses very close together and they're joined. Their sides are joined together. And these are called terrace houses. Sometimes they have a backyard, but sometimes they don't. You can see someone sunbaking on their roof there. You can see the backyard there. There's no plants. So this is page one. So this is the start of our story. And we can see the family and their backyard. We're going to take a little video a look around each page so you can have a close look of what is happening. <laughs> a new baby. So that tells us that Tracy, we know her name because I told it to you, has just been born. And that is the area where they live. Look, a pizza hut. Do you have a pizza hut where you live? And that is the street. And you can see it is a really urban environment. As each page turns, she is aging two years. So there she is in the pool with her father in the backyard. <laughs> and you can see that at least they've planted some grass. There is still a smash repair place behind her where you repair cars. There's still the pizza hut. And on the left there with the green roof is the town hall building. This is page three where she's turned four. And there she is camping out in the backyard. Oh, Tracy, she's drawn her face and her name on the wall. It's still a wrecker, which is where you take cars that can't be repaired. And we can see the street is quite the same. Here she's six and she can see there's a picture there that she's drawn. She's got a trampoline in her backyard. We can still see the town hall with the big tower on the left. And there's her teddy bear. <laughs> this book has been so well loved, it's actually stuck together by sticky tape, which I think you can see. So there she is in the backyard and she's obviously starting to think about re-greening her area because there have been some plants planted. She's eight now. Still got the town hall. We've got an ice cream truck on the left there that's pink. Do you have an ice cream truck in your city or suburb? Oh, she must have been sick because there's some medicine. And she's waving at the kids. She's written something on her hand there and she's got a tissue in her sleeve. So she's sick with something. And her friends are probably coming to say hello and bring her something because she's sick. And look, 
the wreckers or the smash repairers is gone and people are starting to play in that concrete area. She's got a book on her bookshelf now and there she is at the back door. Her garden is looking much greener and she's reading about living with wildlife so she's obviously taking a very deep interest in it. The man next door is building a brick fence and look, they have put some plants in that area that used to be the smash repair. That sign says, help bring back our local plants. Goodness, she's wearing makeup now. She is getting much older. And the plants in her garden and the vegetables are growing very well. There's a magpie near the vegetables. Look, they've put grass in that area and they've made it almost like a park and there are kids playing there. <laughs> Oops, someone's on their roof looking at the birds. You can see that the buildings are increasing down the street. She's out in the backyard with her parents now. She's got a phone there, so she's growing up and a diary. Her dad's helping her fix the bike. That area that's a little park now looks really beautiful and people are sitting there and enjoying the greenery. We're just going to come in and have a bit of a closer look at this little park here. There's kids playing soccer. There's people sitting there chatting. It's night time on this page so we can see the lights shining. It's hard to see in the dark. Oh, there you go. She has a boyfriend. And look, they've made a beautiful pond in the backyard. Lots of bats flying in the night sky. University prospectus. Boy, she's looking at going to university. And now, actually, she looks like she is planting some plants with her boyfriend. They've painted a mural in the back of that park area and the trees are so tall now. They've really regreened that area, haven't they? And actually the whole city is starting to look a bit greener. And this is her wedding day. She's 22. So her backyard is absolutely beautiful and we can see all the people are at her wedding in that little park that they made, that the community made together and they all enjoy together. Oh, they're all having some champagne. And now she has her own baby and look at their beautiful garden. It's absolutely green. So they are now the grandparents and Tracy and her husband and the baby. There's still people enjoying that park, which is nearly overgrown with greenery. And the roof of that building has greenery on it too. You can see all the way to the water now. And this is actually the last page of the book where she's resting in a hammock in her beautiful green area. And we're going to read this author's note to you. Throughout the world, most people live in cities or urban communities and don't feel a strong connection with the land on which they live. Often people think they own the land, that it belongs to them as a thing, a possession. But at the same time, we depend completely on the land to feed us and support us and inspire us. And so we can see that it is the other way around. We belong to the land. If we keep it healthy, it will sustain the web of life on which we depend. In some cities, 
communities are working to bring back the variety of local plants and animals that once lived there. People are discovering the need to nurture and be nurtured by the unique character of the place where they live. It takes time, as this book shows, but by understanding the land on which we live and by caring for it, we can choose between just having a place to live or belonging to a living home. There's some images in the book which make us think that Jeannie Baker was thinking of a suburb in Sydney called Leichhardt. I'm going to show you. And this is making it seem like it's set in Leichhardt, but it's such a universal story that it could be any suburb anywhere. And you can actually take action in your own community. If you see areas that need regreening, maybe you could plant something or approach the council to get permission to plant something. But you can absolutely regreen your own area. I hope you liked this book, Belonging by Jeannie Baker. See you next time.